Praise to you, praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise Blessed and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime. While well, Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, then, I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, if they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, in today's uh, Gospel account, famous Gospel account of the rich man and Lazarus, we see that our Lord clearly shows that, that there is a particular judgment after death that we have to give an account of our life at one point. St. Paul says, in ictu oculi, it, like the twinkling of an eye, like as soon as we die, bang, there will be a particular judgment. And uh, of course, there are judgments here on earth, court cases, and people may be declared 
innocent when they are in fact guilty or vice versa. In other words, the judgment of men may be wrong, but not God. When God judges us in our particular, particular judgment, it'll be diaphanously clear everything that we did or that we omitted. It'll be very clear. Now, this, this uh, gospel also shows us that, that prosperity in this life is not a sign of moral rectitude. It was thought that for some that if you were well off, if you were rich, that, that was an indication that God was somehow blessing you. Uh, probably, probably the rich man did some good, right? But uh, maybe, well, maybe he even had some degrees. Probably if you went into his home and he had a PhD there and a master's here and uh, a recognition, uh, an honorary doctorate from such and such university or such and such school. Uh, but clearly, though he had prosperity and some human recognition in this life, it's very clear from this account, as he feasted there, that he totally lacked empathy. He didn't even notice Lazarus. He probably didn't even know his name. Meanwhile, Lazarus was poor. He was humiliated. There is talk here of those dogs that licked his wounds. It sounds to us, for us, when we hear that, we think, oh, those nice dogs, they're, they're very nice. No, no, that increased his suffering because for the, the Jewish people at that time, dogs were like, there was no notion of domestic dogs that you could have, like a, like a lassie or something around in the home. Dogs were, were considered uh, just unclean animals. And they, would, uh, they, were not, uh, they were not like domesticated like we have them today. So they just increased by licking his wounds, making him even more dirty. And, um, well, certainly Lazarus, we can imagine, had no money. He had no degrees to show off. Maybe he was not even that bright. He was probably not that smart. But still, we know from this passage that he had an inherent dignity. Even if he was poor, even if he lacked all those things that the rich man had, he had a deep, deep human uh, dignity and that that dignity was not recognized by the rich man now was the rich man condemned because he was rich is that why he was condemned is somehow being well off and rich uh, a really bad thing now the real reason we we know fundamentally is that he it's not so much that he was rich in and of itself because he could have used that riches those riches for the good and many sort of wealthy people did do that in that time right we can think of Nicodemus and and others but but the real problem was his his lack of empathy and the, just the fact that he just failed to see Lazarus he didn't notice him and the second thing we notice is his sense of ostentation. He, he feasted and he dressed in ways. Like he dressed in, we were told he dressed in purple. Well, purple, okay, I'm wearing purple now, okay, sorry. But uh, purple for that time was the, was the dress of uh, kingship, you know, people who were kings. So if you were dressed in purple, it meant you had some kind of royal dignity. And he, Wow, I mean, for him to dress in purple was, I don't know, like somebody now wearing a dress in, made of gold, uh, I don't know, made of gold or something. But so, it, you know, it was a real sign of ostentation. Imagine if you saw somebody wearing all in gold, that would be ostentation or sneakers that had gold trim or something like that, right? And, um, and today we know that the fashion industry is a global multi-billion dollar industry, right? where you can buy a pair of pants or you can buy a pair of sneakers for ridiculous sums uh, that, that when you compare uh, that to the, what we call sometimes the global south where people just barely have enough to survive, right? It's, it's quite a, a scandal when you consider the, the, uh, the deep chasm between the poor and the rich. And so that's an occasion for us uh, to think about that and think about the the poor but at the same time i don't think i don't think our lord hated the rich he did not uh, despise them 
In fact, he was sometimes a guest of the rich. And he was interested in them also and even told this story because in some ways they were in greater danger. If we give ourselves over to prosperity and to wealth, um, well, we can close in our horizons right? and uh, where we can end up thinking that that really is our treasure. You know, our Lord himself said, you know, where your treasure is, well, that's where your heart is. If we spend a lot of time in accumulating wealth, maybe we can end up being attached to that and our heart can end up so sort of being blinded to what's around us and, and closing our horizons to the real spiritual realities, uh, the, the moral realities around us. And it does happen that some people are so, so enmeshed in their uh, material prosperity and their wealth and nice cars and I don't know what, uh, that they become kind of uh, spiritually stunted. And maybe it's just, uh, it's not that they're bad people, it's just that... Uh, yeah, the overuse of those things uh, can blur the vision of God. And um, we must remember, the poor are not far away. We see them on the screens, we see them on the internet, but we don't always smell them, right? We don't always smell them. We may not always have the empathy that we should. Maybe we can think of some way in which we can have a greater contact with them so that our heart goes out to them, we can do something, some measurable contribution to them, right? so that our moral sense is heightened, our spiritual sense is heightened, and we contribute in some way to their well-being, in some way, even though they may always stay, stay poor in some way. We can't completely resolve their, their, their problems, but we cannot you know, be completely cut off from them or lack that empathy. This is what our Lord asks us today, that we, we do some good. We, we both pray, but, but also do some measurable act of charity towards the poor, towards those who are lacking. And, the poor, and our Lord will, of course, always reward us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.